Everybody hear me now? Yeah, all right, it is now uh, two minutes past seven. Uh, we will be starting our meeting very shortly. Uh, in the meantime, what I am asking... Oh, that's yeah, all the Thank you for that. Thank you for that. It is 7 o'clock. The polls are closed. Uh, we will be starting our meeting very shortly. In the meantime, uh, while the uh, ballot balloting is being tallied and the votes counted, I am asking the residents of the Hampton Beach Village District to return to the, cable, the table with the supervisor of the checklist and obtain your green card. Uh, the purpose of that is so that we get an accurate count of the, uh, the tallying of the votes. Or when we get into the warrant articles. So it'll just be a few minutes and we will get started very shortly. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, we got that out of the way. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Richard Renier, your moderator for this annual meeting of the Hampton Beach Village District. An assemblage of district residents and a quorum being present, the Warren articles being duly and properly posted, I call this meeting to order at 7.07 p.m. on March 24, 2017. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing. At this time, please participate in a moment of silence for those district residents who have passed away this past year. Ursula Miller, Richard Bergeron, Bob O'Neill III, Catherine Babcock, Brian Bergeron, Elizabeth Morrow, Sam Belovich, Rocky Gorin, Ada DiDriamonimo, and Monsignor Crosby. Thank you. Please be seated, and I'm asking you to make sure that you have all your cell phones and any other electronic devices are turned off. To introduce you seated at this table, from my far left, Joan Rice, our recording secretary, Maureen Buckley, Village District Commissioner, Bob Ladd, Village District Commissioner, Sharon Cuddy Summers, our attorney, from my, on my right, and Chuck Rage, Commissioner, and at the end, Stephen LeBranch, our treasurer. Additionally, we have a number of local and state officials present, and I would just like to recognize them. We have Selectman Regina Barnes, Budget Committee member Mike Pluff, former state representative Fred Rice, Mary Louise Wosley, and I haven't, you know, I would have to have a sheet this long to show her former uh, officiating uh, positions. Uh, Glenn French, our entertainment director, Greg Grady, who participates in, uh, or runs our sand sculptor competition. After we, be before we begin, the issue of non-district residents' participation in our discussion requires resolution. I will entertain a motion to allow non-district residents to address the body. However, any actual vote to move any warrant articles or any amendments will be, as always, by district residents only. Do I have a motion to allow the non-residents to participate? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor of that motion, please raise your green cards. All opposed? I see no opposition, so the moderator has determined that those non-district residents be allowed to speak uh, along with uh, other residents. The rules of the meeting. We will proceed one article at a time. I will read the article. After the article is moved and seconded, I will then open the article for discussion. Any questions are to be directed to the moderator. If you wish to speak, stand and upon being recognized by the moderator, proceed to the microphone, State your name and address and voice your question as briefly as possible. I will allow a reasonable time for each speaker. However, I will exercise my <clears throat> responsibility to maintain a civic and orderly decorum. No amendments will be accepted for a vote until, at my discretion, the main motion has been discussed. Amendments must be in writing. Please give it to me so it be can correctly noted in the minutes, and please focus on the content of the article and possible amendments, and refrain from personal comments. 
This is your meeting, and as a result, the determination of the moderator may be overridden. Voting will be conducted by rating your, raising your cards and tallied by the moderator and assistance in the, if needed. We will now proceed to the warrant articles. Does everyone have picked up a copy of the warrant articles that were over on the table so we can kind of follow along? All right, we have three articles. Actually, Article 1 is to choose by ballot for uh, new commissioner offices, and that has already been accomplished, and the polls were closed at 7 o'clock. Article 2, shall the district vote to accept the budget as set forth in the budget posted with the warrant to raise and appropriate the sum of $61,685 for the Hampton Beach Village District general government exempt budget purposes in addition to any amounts that may be approved by the special articles. Do I have a motion on Article 2? I make a motion to accept Article 2. Do I have a second? A second. All right, the motion was made by Maureen Buckley and seconded by Bob Ladd. Is there any discussion on Article 2? And I am going to ask either one of the commissioners to expand a little bit to inform the public of what the content of that article is. Who wishes to speak? I'll speak, I guess. Right. Commissioner Rage is going to speak. Is general government, which is our executive board payroll, accountant, legal, maintenance of the precinct hall, maintenance of the playground. Can you not hear me? Sorry. Just put it real close. Can you hear me now? All right. So I'll start again. This is our executive payroll, our accountant, our legal, maintenance of the precinct hall and office furniture, playground maintenance, and maintenance sign, entryway signs to the beach, insurance, and other, other general government. That's all our supplies and our recording of, of the meetings. Um, this 61000 is what everybody that lives in the village district contributes. If you are a, a, a business, then, then you, have, you pay the, um, the, the, um, the entertainment budget. Is there any questions on this? Is there any discussion on Article 2? Yes. That's correct. Since there is no discussion on Article 2, I will now take a vote. All those in favor of Article 2 as it is written, raise, please raise your green cards. Anyone opposed? All those opposed? Seeing none, uh, the Article 2 passes 14 votes in favor, no votes opposed. Article 3, shall the district vote to accept the budget as set forth on the budget posted with the warrant and raise and appropriate the sum of $675,546 for the Hampton Beach Village District Culture and Recreation non-exempt budget purposes in addition to any amounts that may be approved by for special articles. Do I have a motion on Article 3? I'll make that motion. The motion was made by uh, Commissioner Roy Rage, seconded by Commissioner Ladd. Is there any discussion, or I will allow the commissioners to expand a little bit on Article 3? Anyone? The, the culture and recreation is all that we do. This is our main part of the budget, is we put concerts on, we put fireworks on, we put events on, sand sculpture events, all different, all different items. Um, it's pretty well broken down in the paperwork. I do want to make a motion. Is this still no, it's too close. I do want to make a motion on um, at 4589-5, the sand sculpture. Um, we had we voted at one of our meetings for a 3% increase, and that number needs to be changed to 77, 289, and 14 cents. So that's a difference. It's an additional $2,251.14. 
and the reason being is there's uh, a lot of additional costs for insurance and bringing sculptors here. So I'm, I'm making that motion, and I need a second. How is it written in the budget now, Chuck? Right now, uh, it what, is. what item? It's 4589-5, sand sculptor. And it's A, yeah, that's correct. No, so there's a new number, it's 77, 289, and 14 cents. Which is an increase of how much? Two thousand two fifty one and fourteen cents. All right, Commissioner Rage has uh, proposed an amendment to that line item to increase that line item by two thousand two hundred and fifty one dollars. All right, we need to round it off, so we're going to drop the fourteen cents. Sorry. Oh, yeah. All right. Mr. Chairman, we're going to drop. It. May I make a recommendation? Our secretary is having very difficult time. You need to speak in the mic, and so do you, right? Because we can't hear you over here. So we're going to increase the budget, the, the, that line item at 4589-5, the letter A, to 77289 which is a difference of 2,251. 2, so that increases the bottom line item to 66. Six hundred and seventy-seven thousand seven ninety-seven. I'm right, Chuck Rage. The Commissioner Rage has proposed an amendment to this particular line item to increase it by two thousand two hundred and fifty-one dollars. All those in favor of that amendment? Oh, I'm sorry. Do I have a second on that? Second by uh, Mr. Preston. All those in favor of increasing that line item by $2,251, raise your car green cards. Fifteen. So the amendment has passed, which now we will go back to the main motion that increases the bottom line item of 4589 culture and recreation to $677,797. Is there any further discussion on Article 3? Seeing no further discussion, I am uh, asking for a motion to increase the bottom line to 677. Oh, so the amendment. The amendment on the amendment. Right. Yeah, Article 3. Right. As amended. We are now voting on Article 3 as amended, which is now the bottom line figure of 677,797. All those in favor of that figure? Determine that the article passed by a vote of 14 or 15 to 1. 15 in favor, 1 opposed. Article 4. To transact any other business that may legally come before this meeting. Does anyone have any other business that should be discussed at this meeting? If so, please step up to the microphone. State, please state your name and address when you when you come up here, please. My name is Ode Peniel, and I have a address. question, I'm problem, uh, suggestion. Excuse me, Uda, Uda. She needs to know your address. 15 Tuttle Ave. The parking lot on Ashworth Ave at the old Clues building. Can we get any kind of direction of how you can get a parking lot to lease for the season? There is a lot of confusion over who's in charge, how you can get one. 
people asking to rent one, they've been told you cannot rent one. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to do a policy or something. A lot of times when I walk by, there is empty spaces. I think it should be addressed. I mean, parking lot is there for the, for the businesses and for um, residential people to, to lease. They, they lease some of them, but nobody really knows how many spots are leased and how many are daily visitors. I'm happy, I'm happy to. Um, thank you, Uda. Um, I consider anyone who couldn't get a lease this year, I consider that to be uh, a miscommunication. Trust me when I say the policy stops here. They can have a lease, especially if they're taxpayers in the Hampton Beach Village District. So that's it, as far as I'm concerned. Chuck? Yeah, I agree. Um, there is also daily and weekly availability. So if someone wants to lease, they can do it overnight, they can do weekly, and they can do seasonal. Uh, and we will have uh, the cost figures soon, as soon as Mike O'Neill gets up, gets back from uh, Florida, we're going to go over everything, and we will have it announced at our ne next meeting, which is this, what's the date of our next meeting? Hold on, I'm sorry. April. <laughs> Not very quick at this. April 12th, so we should have a, a clear answer on April 12th, what the cost per night is, per week, and seasonal. All right. Chuck, who would they see to get the lease once the cost is established? And they'll have to go through uh, Mike O'Neill. He runs the, uh, the lots for us. So it's Mike O'Neill. He's at the lots. He lives on, on, in the precinct uh, on Bragg Ave. So we'll make sure that it's accessible. And if you have any problems or any issues, you can always call me, right. Bob or Maureen. So we'll, we'll, make, we'll take care of it. All right. At the, I'm not sure what meeting it was, there was a uh, zoning board meeting. And that was the first I heard that someone couldn't get a spot. And uh, we're going to make sure that, that it's available for anybody that, that is a taxpayer in the village district. Does anyone else have any further business to discuss at this meeting? Please state your name and address clearly for the recording clerk. Helena Barthel, 33 Dover Avenue. I'm not sure if this is a question for this board or for, this, for the state, but how do you use the lockers at the beach? We have all these lockers. I never see anybody using them. I wouldn't know where you'd get a key or how to use it, and I just didn't know whether that that is a state question. I have no idea about uh, the John, John Kane, though. John, She's got his hand up. Sure. Do you have a lock for John? Yeah. Number 45. Name, address, please. John Kane, 115 Ocean Boulevard. Um, I've asked that to Brian Wilson a couple times. They don't have any mechanism in place to handle the keys. And consequently, that is basically why they don't have those work. And they had the keys in there, but there was no way to, you know, make sure someone didn't make another key and came back the next day and opened it up and grabbed everything. So they, they haven't gone forward with that. You can't, you can't use the locker, is that what you just said? You can't. <laughs> Hold on, I, can you just stay up there for a minute and, and go ahead? Talk to the state about the lockers as well. Uh, Steve, please, louder. And oh, I have also and talked to the state about the lockers, and the answer that I got was that the idea of putting in the lockers seemed like a good idea, but it didn't quite work out because you end up all of the where you put the key when you have sand blowing around on the beach, it fills this little slot so they cannot use those lockers. They were supposed to remove them last year. Of course, it's going to cost money to remove them and do, but they, that will be what will happen. You may notice that some of the doors are missing. They're going to be removed. They're never going to be used. Okay? It, was a, it wasn't a good idea right from the beginning. All right? So that's your answer. So I, I don't. I want to get a feel for the room uh, because this is a quick meeting. Um, I don't know if, if people are interested in some of the events that are going on. And while John's up there and he's our marketing director, I don't know if people here would like to hear him tell us uh, 
some of the events in the time timeline. I don't know if that's appropriate. Is that okay? Yes. I'm fine with it. Well, John, if, group, if he's right willing to expand a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'm not. Where are you going? <laughs> Please make sure, too, that you oh, take you the pamphlet that John put out there. That tells you everything. Pamphlets are there. The Yes, on the table over to the right, there are a lot of pamphlets that, that show uh, the events of the coming year. Yeah, right over here, we, they actually have the Chamber of Commerce booklet that uh, has come out. They have the pamphlet that we um, make 140,000 that we distribute through the um, whole New England area in Canada over there. And we have the bumper stickers, which uh, were produced um, earlier and uh, were developed from the uh, Children's Week of last year, which is an ongoing competition that we have. But I'll tell you, I mean, last year we had a lot going on. Um, in this year we have a heck of a lot going on. Um, Mr. French here has got a hundred bands, hundred nights of entertainment up at the Seashell uh, uh, stage this year. So um, starting in May 6th, I believe, it's a Saturday night, Glenn, and falling right through um, through Labor Day night, we will be responsible, uh, not every night, but midway through June, we will have a concert uh, on the stage every night, so it's great. Um, here, and if you walk the beach, just look at some of the kiosks. This is in all the kiosks up um, on the boardwalk now, and it just shows you how popular we, we've come. Uh, this weekend, run for the border. They start in Kittery and end down here uh, in Salisbury, come back, and they all kind of come back to Hampton Beach. And it's, you know, it's, it's Sunday, March 26th, no one's around, but it will probably bring 5,000 people to Hampton Beach. And some of those people that are going to be running never come to Hampton Beach. So what you see is they come down and go, gosh, there's so much going on here. And then hopefully in return they come back um, and bring their families up here for the uh, summer vacation. So we, we kind of like those where you know, it's an event that's going on. We can promote it a little bit. We don't have to actually run it, and we get all the benefits from that. Um, just, I'm going to throw this out there just because a lot of people miss it. Um, April 8th is coming up, and it is the Easter egg hunt. Extremely popular. Last year, we buried 6,000 eggs on the beach, and they find every one of them. Every one of them. I don't care what you say, those kids keep on digging. And if you don't have children, it's just still a fun event just to go up and, and watch the kids, watch the little kids that, you know, they'll find one egg and they keep on digging, and Dad will go over and kick a, an egg in the hole that the child's been uh, digging at. So, you know, that's just what Hampton's all about. It's family, fun, free uh, uh, beach to come to. Uh, we started a few years ago, uh, and I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, with the Winnicunit Prom March, and, um, and Maureen Buckley and Glenn really got in with it and said, hey, we can snazz this up a little bit for you. And they, now they're decorating the stage, and it's a big turnout. I, I'm, you know, I don't have any kids in school, but I like to see you know, the, our kids that we have in town going through it, uh, getting up there, and they all have to do their little dance or how else they walk on stage. You know, the guy holding the girl, the girl holding the guy, and, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's nice to see our kids, um, you know, putting on their best show. And it is, it's for the juniors, um, so we get to see them another year. Uh, last year, Chuck Rage um, had a great party at his new Pelham Suites, and there was about 30 kids up there with the family, and they're taking pictures, and then they just got in the limo and, and went one block to the... Uh, the uh, Seashell State, but they did arrive in style. Um, My limit is 50 people, so that's all that was there. Okay, that's, that's, that's so everybody knows. <laughs> Chief A. <Aon. laughs> yeah. um, kites, uh, the Kites Against Cancer, great event uh, put on by Exeter Hospital. It's uh, grown rapidly over the last four or five years that they've had it. Uh, they've got Roomba, they've got, they've got um, kites that you can um, purchase. Um, they have all kinds of games for the kids, face painting and all that traditional stuff we have. The uh, tow rodeo is coming up and we all know how that is. Uh, it kind of kicks off the summer. Um, that's going to be the same weekend and um, get up early because they start honking those horns at 9 o'clock. And little kids just love having that go by. Uh, World Ocean uh, Day celebration will be June 3rd. Walk by the Sea, brain injury, uh, June 4th. Sand sculpting. 
Um, the main dates, uh, the drop in the sand, the ninth. Uh, they drop the sands the ninth, but the competition dates uh, will be the 15th, 16th, and 17th. And as you know, on the 17th, that's an enormous day where you get out the vote from one to three, and we have the awards at eight, and then we blast that out with fireworks after the concert at 9.30. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, beach ball, ball tournaments, if you've heard me before, we are just so jammed with those. Um, years ago, we tried putting it on, and it's a lot of work. And now we actually have these companies that come in. And Brian Wilson, unfortunately, we are so popular that he's got people, you know, wanting to take the whole summer, and then the other company wants the same week. So, you know, we will have volleyball June, July, and August at Hampton Beach, and it is a great crowd that comes. 90% of them are uh, younger um, uh, kids, and probably 75% of them are young girls, and they have a, a great time, and the families come, and they tell us how, you know, grateful that they are that we have such a nice facility here with the bathrooms and the beach and the parking. Um, and again, they'll come back during the summertime. Little Miss Hampton Beach and Miss Hampton Beach, a tradition for 65 years going plus. Uh, last year we started out with the Hampton Beach Wrestling. Uh, and again, if, if you've heard me talk about it, it's fun. I didn't know how this was going to go on. Uh, when a kind of high school wrestling team puts it on, and you have little kids and big guys. And when I say little, I'm talking little, you know, uh, maybe six years old. And it goes by weight class. So you can have a six-year-old girl and a six-year-old boy going at it. Last year, the girl won. She was great. Um, and you've heard me say that story. The, um, and then the, the, the quality of it is um, the, the winner of the men's division, high, high weight division, was actually on a scholarship. He's a um, Hampton Beach lifeguard, nice, really nice guy. Um, put his guys down really fast so that when the final competition came, uh, when they announced, you know, Bill Jones or whatever his name is, Bill Jones didn't raise his hand. <laughs> he saw what was in front of him, so um, the guy won by default. Talent shows and the live auditions this year is a little different from last year. We had Memorial Day weekend, and this year we're going to have live auditions August 6th from 12 to 5 p.m., and we'll try to be getting that word out. Children's Festival this year will be running from the 14th to the 18th. Hampton Beach Talent Show, uh, a, a great three-day event, is going to be the 25th, 26th, and the finals will be Sunday night, the 27th. Uh, we'll follow up with that on the, the annual uh, Seafood Festival, uh, one of the 10th, uh, 100th uh, largest events in the world, I mean the United States. It's always a big success. And um, this year we're going to be putting on 18 different fireworks displays, 17 of them which are the Hampton Beach Village Districts, um, and one for the Seafood Festival that will make 18. Um, Monday Movies on the Beach this year will start July 10th through July, uh, August 28th. Um, it's a great time to bring down the family. The movies are always fun. The kids love it. The parents love it. Um, and everything so far except for the Seafood Festival is free. So, that is, brings me to another. Hampton Beach is recognized as one of the best bargain resorts in the United States because once you get here and park your car, that's it. Everything else, just to have fun. We got a playground that's free. The parents just eat that right up. Kids love it all the time. Um, and then the fall events reach the beach, very big. Grand State, State Wheels Men, September. And we uh, ended off at Smutty Nose Rock Fest. Um, and then, again, are successful and has grown over the years, as, as anyone who goes up and watches it, is the New Year's Eve fireworks. The state puts on something and gives out cookies and hot chocolate and coffee. The Blue Ocean Society does it with their touch tank. Um, Glenn had a, a DJ on the stage last, um, last year. We had lights on the stage, and um, the fireworks were super. And there's not a parking space on the beach. In fact, they double park everywhere. It's like the middle of July uh, on a Wednesday night. So that has really taken off from, you know, from the first night that I was up there with it. Um, so that's it for you know, the entertainment, um, you know, of what we got going. Um, I don't know if, you know, another thing that we do, and we've been kind of, 
we're successful, very successful with. Um, and I want to thank the commissioners for having me up here and speaking about it because they've asked me to, so I will speak about it. Um, and this is the, our social media on the HamptonBeach.org uh, uh, site. We currently have YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Facebook is the most popular um, on our page. We currently have 36,000 followers, um, which is pretty good because we only started about four or five years ago on Facebook with this. Um, it keeps us in touch with you know the visitors that are coming, the guests that are coming. It also updates the Hampton residents and the uh, village district people. They can go on and see what's going on. Um, and we put up a lot of different posts. Um, during, during the summer months, we use the Facebook also you know, to let people know is the cancellation of fireworks. We put that out there right, right away. Uh, it's one of the biggest questions. Second biggest question at the chamber office. First one is, what's the water temperature? And second, are they going to have fireworks? Chuck Rage knows all about it. He gets the calls, and, and I just I don't aim, envy him it's for the that. The worst thing to do um, is to. Cancel. We also put out movies <laughs> of the week, special events, anything that we, we can promote. We use Facebook because it really doesn't cost us anything. We just put the notices out there. We've got a thousand pictures. If I see something happen, I'll just walk out and talk to my wife. I'm shooting pictures of everything, and then we put it up on Facebook. I did get yelled at for the storm because I opened the window to take a picture of that storm we had and wrecked one of the tape things on the wall. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it was a nice picture. <laughs> the Hampton Beach official page is a very family-friendly page. Uh, and we make it that way. The medium age um, that looks at our page is between 25 and 55, and basically the middle part is the highest, but 76% of them are women. And that's exactly what we're looking at. Because when I talk to people that are trying to sell me advertising, I say, okay, what are your demographics? You know, what do you have? No, that's not going to work. I want to see women. Because women are usually the determining factor and where the families are going to go for vacation. It's not dad in the racetrack. No, no, no. They want to come to the beach. They want to go to the beach. The kids, they know they have the playground. Um, it's family friendly um, and they have a great time. Um, there is another person that does help me um, with the Facebook, and that is Lisa Martino. Some of the commissioners have may have met her. Uh, she lived on, on Boston Ave. Um, she um, moved, but she currently still has family on the Boston Ave. So she knows Hampton Beach as we know Hampton Beach. And the you need a woman almost to put out a woman's kind of feel on some of these posts. She also helps us with all the PRs that we do, like for Sandcastle, who won it, talent competition, who won that, or if something comes up, we crank that out, we, we throw that out to it, uh, mass mailing, similar to what the Chamber of Commerce does, but we, we go out to more media groups. Um, again, being family friendly, our filters are set on the page, so, you know, there's no swears, there's no, you know, you, know, you go on Yahoo and it's a, you know, Donald Trump, Obama, or whatever, whoever, we don't have that. There's no, there's no cyber bullying on our page. Uh, if there was, and we saw it, and we do watch every comment, uh, we would just shut it down immediately. The, uh, them down. Um, the um, other nice thing about the page is that the content is not all by me. We have a lot of people that like our page. We have professional photographers that see our page. Uh, and if you saw our page, we just took it down a little while ago, but there was a beautiful picture of the jetty uh, after it had been fixed. And it was, you know, shot with a light blue U, and it was actually gorgeous, and we got thousands and thousands of compliments, and we just, you know, let them know that the, um, the phot uh, photographer, I'm gonna say Bill Jones, took that picture, but again, we get a lot of people, um, Bobby Preston right over there, he's um, in his 377 building, right? 399, 377, whatever that is. Um, but they get up in the morning, like Bobby, and you know, you get a sunrise, and it's right there in front of you, and they take that picture and submit it to us, and we put that up, and everyone loves it. They say, it's my beach, uh, you know, uh, I miss it. Um, just to give you a couple numbers on this. Um, 
The numbers we have are very good for a resort. Just last year, we posted 236 posts to the page. We had over 5 million total impressions. We reached 3,150,960 people. That is phenomenal numbers, big, big numbers. Uh, 21,000 pe people shared. They saw it and they shared it with their friends who weren't on our page. We had over uh, 5,700 comments. We read them all. Um, one, one of those posts that we got a lot of hits on uh, was an uh, unfortunate one, and it was the the one the post about Elizabeth, Elizabeth Monroe, fondly referred to as a shooting gallery lady. On that post, we reached 701,307 people, and we got 1,671 comments. And I'll tell you, they were very hard to read. Lisa was crying half the time. Uh, and I told her, just stop, I'll pick up the comments. And, but you got to read them and, re and respond to them. Not everyone, but a lot of them. And, and she touched a lot of people, and uh, that thing just went completely viral, as we all know. Uh, we also get insights of, you know, uh, where the people are coming from that are visiting our page. We, we actually have 40 different countries on our page, which is, you know, you might think that's crazy, but you think of all the Dominicans, the Lithuanians, all of Chuck's workers, wherever they come from, uh, and the people that visit, um, they like to keep in contact with the Empty Beach and they do it through Facebook. Um, what I found out at looking on Facebook, there are many, many people who love Hampton Beach. And they call it their beach, even though they only come up here a couple times a year or making a few day trips. But it's their beach. Uh, and that's what we hear over and over. And I'm just going to give you a typical example of one message that we get. This is from a guy, Gary Brown, mid-August mid last year. Hampton Beach is my favorite place in the world. Exclamation point. My wife and I have been going there for 40 years, exclamation point. We take a two-week vacation there every year. We absolutely love it. The beach is beautiful, and the staff there does a wonderful job of keeping it clean. This guy actually goes on to say he's saddened sometimes when people don't pick up and leave the trash on the beach. So he's taking responsibility, and that's the kind of people that come to Hampton Beach, and that's the people that we try to reach out to. Thank you, John. Thank Any you, questions? John. <laughs> yes. Do you, do you have the date for the high school spring concert at the show? The, the, the no. Tuesday after Memorial Day weekend. If splatters or anything else I can help you with. No, thank you very much, John. No, thank, thank you, you very, very much. Thank That's you as well. We're all good. We're all good. Both of you do a lot. We appreciate you. Thank you, John. Does this gentleman want to be recognized? You all set? Anyone else? Well, seeing none, our, oh, I have the results of the our election. There were 41, 41 total ballots. For commissioner for three years, Maureen Buckley, 41 votes. For treasurer, Steve LeBranch, 40 votes and one blank. Well, look at this one. Moderator, Richard Renier, 35 votes, five blanks, and one vote for Mr. Bob Preston. He came in later on this afternoon, didn't he? For clerk for one year, Janet Allard, 41 votes. Supervisor of the checklist for three years, Eileen DeBull. Now, before we adjourn, uh, I am asking all of the elected officials, after we adjourn, to go to the back table here so we can swear you all in. Seeing no further business before this uh, assemblage, I am calling the meeting to an end at... Oh, excuse me. Yes, yes, go right ahead. We've all heard how incredibly effective the precinct is at presenting entertainment and marketing the beach, which is good for the town, the state, and the community. But I think we should focus a little bit on the fact we are a political organization. We're a stakeholder on the budget committee, 
we're a stakeholder on the Hampton Beach Area Commission by law. So we have kind of a political impact or effect when we choose to get involved in something. So the, we are kind of like a multifaceted diamond. There are many things we can do, and hopefully some of them will come out well. Thank you. All right, seeing no further business, I declare this meeting adjourned at uh, 746 on June, on June, on March 24th, 2017. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.